Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. We've been hearing from a lot of consumers and subscribers lately that they're getting pretty mixed results from the different bagged and potting mixes that they're using. And you can see in front of me here in the lab, we're getting fairly mixed results as well. Now, I always think it's important to know before you grow, here I am in a soil testing lab. So I always recommend a soil test so you can see if there's any nutrient deficiencies or pH adjustments that are needed. So what we did to help address these concerns of the consumers and subscribers is we went down to our local big box store and we just randomly grabbed five different commonly and commercially available bagged potting and garden soils. Is that good stuff? That's the one I've been getting for a while now. Okay. Okay. One thing you might notice is these soils are pretty similar, but they're also somewhat dissimilar. So what do they have in common? These are all organic based soils that are gonna have a high ability to hold and exchange nutrients. And they're also gonna have a fairly similar pH, somewhere between, oh, the low sixes and the low sevens. But they are composed of different substrates and have different ingredients and different nutrient sources. So what we're gonna do is dive into how we set this study up and then look at some results. So how do we set this study up? Well, we started off just acting like a typical consumer and we headed off to our big box store. As soon as we walked in, we were immediately overwhelmed, probably like a lot of us are, uh, at all of the selections and options that were out there from bag size to price point, organic versus synthetic. And so we literally just started pulling things off the shelf. What we found or what we landed on was a couple of different Kellogg products, a Vigoro product, and a couple of miracle Grow products. And you can see those in the background behind me right now. Once we got all those soils back to the lab, the next step was to create our simulation raised beds. And so these basically I want you to look at just like a miniature raised bed. These each got equal amounts of soil put in them. You can see they're all leveled off uh, quite nicely here. And then we planted uh, several different species. So we planted tomatoes, peas, and then we planted lettuce as well. Now, in the beginning, we planted a few extra than we needed just so that we could thin down and be sure that we had good comparisons and at least a couple of plants for each species. Why did we choose tomato, peas, and lettuce? Well, each have slightly different nutrient requirements, and we wanted to show that across scale, or maybe you're not growing one of these or you're growing the other. So we've got tomatoes, peas, and lettuce to compare across these five soils. We also have my soil test data from the time that we filled these miniature beds, and we'll be looking at that here shortly. So as I mentioned, we got these seeded and we had multiple, at least two plants for each soil. Now, why did we do that? That's just so that we had a replication. So if there's any variability, we can see that, or if there's similarities, we can see that as well. Now we maintained um, good moisture in these. They were watered daily after seeding. And right now what we're looking at is this is three weeks after we planted. And we wanted to show you the results early. So now let's go ahead and jump into the results. We're gonna look at the results kind of in two different buckets. First, we're gonna look at our visual results across the tomatoes, peas, and lettuce. Then we're gonna jump into the MySoil data and look at the nutrient differences and pH differences amongst each of these uh, bagged soils. So let's just go ahead and start up front with our tomatoes. In our first and second miracle Grow based soils, you see we've got pretty good vigor, growth, and color in both of those tomatoes. This happens to be the miracle Grow organic, and this is the miracle Grow pot mix. As we move down to uh, our next soil, this is the Vigoro, and our Vigoro tomatoes aren't quite as vigorous as in the miracle Grow mixes, but certainly are in a bit better shape than the next two we're going to look at. The next two are our Kellogg soils. We've got the Kellogg raised bed soil as well as our Kellogg garden soil. And you can see our tomatoes really haven't grown much at all. In fact, we're, we haven't even put on our first true leaves yet. Um, so definitely saw some stunting in the growth of the tomatoes there. Now, as we start to look at the peas, let's look at those similarities and differences. Peas are gonna use just a little bit less nitrogen than these other species. And in fact, as they mature, they're gonna start fixing their own nitrogen. Now, my suspicion is they're not quite doing that yet, but their lower in requirement overall um, kind of masks the differences that we see here. We do see some differences though in the leaf color. In both of the miracle Grow treatments, we've got a nice dark green, and then we are starting to see a lack of green or some chlorosis in these other treatments, the Vigoro um, as well as both of our Kellogg treatments. 
We continue to see pretty big differences in our lettuce as well, with both of the miracle grows being relatively high performers in terms of our lettuce. Um, we've got great leaves and more leaves, more size. In the Vigoro, a little bit of difference between those two replications with one fairly vigorous lettuce plant and one um, that's a bit weaker. Now, similar to those tomatoes, as we move into the Kellogg soil, we're having a hard time keeping this lettuce alive, um, let alone thriving. So we definitely saw some visual differences in the above ground growth between all five of these bagged garden soils. So we have to wonder where that variation comes from. We can clearly see the variation. And so the my soil tests are gonna help us answer just that. So as I start looking at some of these results, um, we start to see one of the main differences is going to be in our nitrogen levels. And so let's just take a quick glance at those. We can see here in our Kellogg soils, we have relatively low nitrogen levels. Just gonna go ahead and highlight the three uh, lowest nitrogen levels. Those are at about three parts per million each of, in each of these. And then the Vigoro is at about six parts per million. So you can see just a little bit of bump in nitrogen gives us a pretty big jump in plant growth and development. Now, as we move over to our miracle Grow soils, we see significant uh, increases in that nitrogen. So in the miracle Grow potting mix, we were actually at about 70 parts per million nitrogen, whereas in that organic uh, miracle Grow mix, we were sitting right about 20 parts per million. So quite a big difference as compared to the Kellogg and Vigoro soils. And we see that difference in nitrogen and plant growth and development and that dark green color that we get from our chlorophyll. Now, outside of the nitrogen levels, you can look at those charts on your own, maybe hit pause right now and just take a peek and analyze this data on your own. But there is gonna be some variability, especially in our micronutrients. And then I mentioned in the pH as well. We see that both of the Kellogg soils are actually gonna fall within that optimal range uh, for pH, as well as the Vigoro and the miracle Grow potting mix. Our miracle Grow organic was just on the upper edge of that optimal range, a little bit high on pH, but not enough for, to be concerned about. And being that these are organic soils, as that organic matter breaks down, we're gonna expect to see these soils slightly acidify naturally anyway. So I always pick on my neighbor, Derek, and I'm going to continue to pick on neighbor Derek just a little bit more. Um, I was watching him put his raised garden together. I want him to soil test. He doesn't want a soil test. And so he'll build out his garden beds and he just slings in the spring, puts a bunch of triple 16 out. Now that doesn't always make economic sense. It doesn't make ecologic sense. And we really want to just be putting down what our plants need. If we would have taken that sling in the spring mentality, we would have had too vigorous a growth in both of these miracle Grow soils and they would have been likely falling over. Over. Whereas with our Vigoro and our Kellogg's, they might have actually benefited from that boost of nitrogen, but they wouldn't have needed the phosphor, the potassium. So I think we really need to be looking at our soil test results and driving our fertility program based on that. With that being said, we might not have seen any additions to the, to the miracle Grow soils at this growth stage of the plants. We may have seen a slight increase in nitrogen, for as, as an example, with a fertilizer application in the Vigoro, and we would have needed to considerably amend both of these Kellogg soils to get similar growth results. So what are some of the key takeaways that we've learned just from this small sampling of available garden soils? Well, one, not all garden or potting soils are created equally, even though they might have a similar appearance and have a similar organic base and a great ability to hold and exchange nutrients. Another difference is they're gonna have different needs for fertilizers and amendments. Um, like I mentioned, the miracle Grow likely wouldn't need any addition, additions to start, whereas some of these others may benefit from that, especially if we wanna get a really good jump start in the spring for our garden. Another takeaway is that we really wanna know before we grow with a soil test so that we can be growing the most nutrient dense crops and plants from the very beginning all the way through harvest. All right, now that we've looked at the results, let's go ahead and talk about the next steps. These three soils are in pretty good shape. So I think for both the miracle Grows and the Vigoro, we're just gonna continue to grow those out for several weeks, and then we'll come back and take a look at how they're doing. For these two Kellogg soils that are struggling a little bit, we're fearful that we might lose all these plants. They might not survive for that period of time. So what we're gonna do for both of these Kellogg soils is we're gonna follow the My Soil recommendations fertilize these to those recommendations, grow them out for the same period of time, and then check back in with you soon. Thanks for following along, and I'll see you soon in the lab.